Today's video, we're going to be breaking down the five best passing concepts in Madden. Now, this applies to whatever Madden you want it to apply to. It can apply to Madden 23, Madden 24, Madden 25, Madden 26, Madden 19, Madden 17. These concepts work every single year, and they are the best concepts in Madden. All right? So there's five of them, and we are going to start out with the first one. And the first one is really designed to be a man-to-man kind of based passing concept. So we're going to go first and foremost over kind of my main and favorite passing concept against man coverage. Now these concepts are based on the air raid offense. These are principles that I have kind of adapted to Madden that are really fundamentally founded in the air raid offense. And just for fun, we're going to do them out of a completely random formation gun doubles just because you can see that they can work in any year of Madden with pretty much any any routes the only thing you need for this if you if you don't have the routes is a slot apprentice and you can literally create everything from that so because gun, gun doubles doesn't have the actual routes I need I'm going to use a slot apprentice but you can literally do this from anything as long as you have the routes okay so the first route combo that we're going to go over is what's called a shallow cross concept. Now, the way this play works in real life is it would look something like what you see on your screen. As you can see right here, we have a smart routed in route to the tight end. We have a drag route or shallow cross route to the slot receiver. And then we have two clear out or runoff vertical routes to pull the defense vertically to open up the underneath space. Now, in Madden, you can tweak these concepts to make them more effective against more coverages. So the way that I like to tweak this concept to make it more effective against more coverage is to utilize a tight end apprentice post or a slot apprentice post, and it would look something like this. Essentially, it's just high-lowing the man coverage, and what you're going to see is these, this drag route is really good from either side against man coverage. Now, another way to run the same concept, and this is a little bit depending on the Madden that you are playing, the specific Madden that, you're, that we're talking about. In this year's game, slant routes are not that effective, but in other Maddens, they've been perfectly fine. So it would look something like this, where we're gonna use a slant post concept, which is virtually the same as a shallow cross concept, just in the way it's gonna work. And as you can see, now our post is going to be able to manipulate that man-to-man -man coverage. Another great little feature, uh, if you wanted to, would be to tag a comeback route. And the reason why comebacks are sometimes helpful is just because they beat man coverage at a, pretty, at, at a pretty good rate. So you could use that as well, or just a basic curl. Uh, there's no reason why we couldn't just use a simple curl route here on the outside. When he snaps back, we're just going to basically pass lead down inside, and you're able to hit this against this. Now, the cool part about the shallow concept is it's also really good against zone. So it's, it's good against man, but it's really good against zone too because we are stretching the defense vertically and horizontally within the play. And so what you'll see is if they play kind of underneath, then your tight end post is going to get wide open. And then let's say that they decide, okay, well, I don't want to play super – you know, I'm going to play that, but I'm going to now, you know, maybe use her the tight end post and get him to, you know, get pulled. Then because of these outside clear out routes, it's really an underrated part of this. But these outside streaks will pull the flats to the sideline, and then you can throw this underneath. And that's the shallow cross kind of principle. The next passing concept that we're going to be taking a look at here is known as the sail concept. Now, the reason the sail concept is, re is really effective so the sail concept kind of differs from the shallow cross concept, although it's still kind of high-lowing the same defender. If you think about the shallow cross concept, essentially what we're doing is we're creating a high-low read basically on the middle, to a degree like the middle of the field or the curl flat defender as well. So as you see here, like if that, if that slot uh, corner kind of climbs up to the post, then we're probably going to want to check to this drag right here. So what we're going to be doing with the sail concept 
is kind of the same thing. Now, if you were to run the sale concept in a true air raid offense, what you would do with this and why you would call this is really more of a zone beater. Um, it can beat man coverage, but it's a little bit more of a zone-based play call. Now, the other really important thing to cover in terms of how this concept works and something that's really important in general is if we were to go to like the true air raid principle of the sale concept, it's really a smart routed out route that's going to go about 10 to 15 yards downfield. And then on the back end of this, you're typically doing some kind of, you know, basic check down like, like what you see here. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to essentially just get this deep out route over the curl flat defender. Now in Madden, what we can do is we can change the depth of the routes to make it a little bit more consistent against a more variety of coverages, okay? So again, what I like to do here is if you have a tight end apprentice, it's a little better just because we can use a little bit more space. We can run this tight end apprentice corner route to the wide side of the field. We're gonna zig the backside slot and put a smart routed in to the backside solo. So you see this kind of what it looks like. Now, if you wanted to, you could block the running back and basically put the, the slot on a drag and that would create your drag route. But basically what you have here is a high low to the sideline where you're looking either your streak, you're looking your streak, your corner, your flat. And essentially you'll see here, we have the, sh the corner route open. So we wanna throw that on the sideline. Now let's say they climb to the corner, which is rare that they would do that. But if they do climb to the corner, you wanna be prepared. So you see here, they're gonna to climb to the corner a little bit more. So we can just check down to our running back flat. So then what this play is gonna require your opponent to do is they're gonna to have to play what's known as a double flat. So it's essentially a cover to Mabel type coverage, as you can see. And this specific play is really good uh, or coverage is really good, sometimes against a spread out set like this, you can hit this deep fade uh, with a super deep outside pass lead. Wasn't able to hit it right there. Sometimes you can do that. There's other plays in the, that we're going to go over that are going to be a little bit better for that. But in general, this is a really good kind of coverage. So a lot of times what people will do, though, because these cloud flats are dropping so deep, they'll drop an underneath flat. And so when they drop the underneath flat, it often means that there is only one other hook curl. If they're blitzing anybody, this is kind of not a good play. This is a good coverage for this concept, but you then want to kind of work your backside check down and really look for your backside in route in the event that the corner route's taken away. And obviously, you can always just throw the ball away, but that's the basics of the sale concept. Now, the cool part is in Madden, as I was talking about, is you can invert this. You can kind of subtly tweak it. So the way we're gonna do that is through the use of a slot apprentice corner with the fade. And then if we don't have a running back on that side, feel free to just put a little drag route to your tight end. And then we can put that circle receiver on that backside in or that backside curl route based off what you wanna do. And essentially here again, you see that corner when he cuts to the sideline, pass lead down and outside. And it's a very, very good play. Again, this is very good for forcing your opponent to have to get into kind of a cover to Mabel type of defense in which they're gonna have to stop your corner route. And it, they have to also do this to both sides because if they don't do this to both sides, let me kind of show you what is gonna happen. So let's say that they wanna maybe do the defense like what you see right here. What this is gonna do is it's gonna close the middle of the field so they're not gonna get burned over the top and then it's gonna still keep that additional underneath coverage, right? So if we were to set the play art up like this, you're gonna see those yellow zones kind of snap there, and then we have this nice big space to throw this backside dig. So they have to kind of drop more coverage, more zones to the sideline, and that kind of leads us to our next passing concept, which is known as Y cross. It is an awesome, awesome play, especially out of two by two, it's really good. And the main purpose of Y cross is to try to manipulate both the middle of the field and then also the opposite sideline from the Y sail. So the way that this is actually ran in the real air raid is a little hard, in my opinion, to imitate in Madden. And the reason why is because of route spacing 
in, in a little bit other things as well. But in general, what this would look like would be a crosser to the slot receiver. It would be a smart routed out route to the tight end, a clear out route to the circle receiver. And then the back, the back on the backside here would either, you know, basically like a curl flat backside or a simple backside in like this or like this. There's a lot of different ways to kind of get to it. But in general, this is kind of what it looks like. So if you look at what we're trying to accomplish here, we're trying to get a high low on the right side. And then we're also kind of trying to get the user to run to the right a little bit to open up this middle throw right there. Now, again, as you saw, of course, you know, he played that, of course. But what I want to get at is, again, that main idea. So from the idea of sale. So we've got this kind of sale defense set up to the left. But on the right side, we're still playing, you know, kind of a, a three coverage. So when they see that tight end come up like this, they're going to give you more of a coverage. It's going to look more so like what you see on your screen here. And what this is going to then do, because we're having this either smart routed post or, or cross, then what you'll see here is there's this window to hit this right there. And that's kind of a super important window in real air raid. In Madden, I wouldn't say that window is as critical to be hit. And there are other ways to attack that specific space in Madden. So what I like to do with this play, again, the main purpose of this is to kind of run across, the, is to cross the formation and really force the user to kind of carry this to the cross. So what I like to do with this specific play is... I really like to just put the tight end on a five-yard out route, block the running back because you're going to need some more time with this play. Crosser, the slot receiver, you could also put him on a slot apprentice post depending on if it's more likely man coverage, you might want to use that slot apprentice post. But the crosser's fine and then a backside in route. So you see this is what the play art looks like now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peek that circle receiver then I'm going to look to that tight end, and then I'm going to look to that cross. You see, I still kind of get that same manipulation, and I can still kind of hit this right in that little window. But the other thing that I can now do is let's say that your opponent is going to run a cloud-based coverage here, and maybe they leave that vertical hook. We were talking about that previously as well and some different adjustments they might do. So let's say they're doing something you know, more maybe like this for, for lack of better, you know, something like that, okay? The cool part about this is if they're not playing disciplined flat coverage on the tight end side, you see here, there's no flat. I can just check it to the tight end quick and take advantage of what the defense gives me. So now they have to respect your flat route. So because they have to respect your flat route, that means you're going to get a hard flat. And then this hook curl is the user and he gets put into conflict. The conflict is does he roll back here to take that cross? Or does he kind of become more of a mid-read defender and hang out so he can defend the backside in route? That's kind of the conflict that this play is going to create. And again, here's what kind of a general thing would look like if we're calling this as a counter or a complement to the sale play. So you see here. And then now you see kind of how this works. If he stays in the middle of the field, then we can throw this right in that little window right there over there on the deep right sideline across the formation. So now what this forces your opponent to have to do, and this is where things are gonna get really interesting for you, is now they have to play a, a more basic cover two, right? And they still have to kind of climb that middle area of the field. And if they don't do that, then we're gonna be able to manipulate that. So again, if I was to you know keep my user more shallow, and try to take the in route, look at this window right there that you see because that deep half has to go to that deep fade. You can throw it kind of right under the deep half. That's the beauty. That's one of the most underrated elements of Y cross. Now, another way that you can get to the same basic concept, and it is important to show this, is if you have a tight end apprentice. If you have a tight end apprentice, you can use the tight end apprentice crosser with the zig route, and then you could run this right here. And the reason this is really good is because it's a little better against man because you have a zig route now, and then also you'll see the it's going to get underneath some zones, 
really, really nice route for you as well. So that's kind of in general what the Y cross concept is designed to do. It's designed to cross the formation. And if you're running it properly, you should be able to throw this crosser kind of right in the middle of the field. And then if you wanted to, you could put a backside check down like a curl or a backside check down like an in route. And the beauty of this is, as you can see here, right there, that window is one of the most underrated throwing lanes in the entire game. The next concept that we're going to be going over in the fourth passing concept in the system is the seams concept. It's a four verticals concept. Pretty much everybody has this. It's essentially what we're trying to accomplish with this play is we're trying to attack the seams. Now, there are a lot of ways to attack the seams, and the seam area of the field is really between the hash marks and the numbers on both sides. So the traditional air raid way of doing it and the purpose of doing this is really when you've kind of got them to start doing things like what you see on your screen where you've got two, you know, two clouds, two hard flats, and maybe two hook curls. So what this is going to do is basically we are going to try to attack kind of the seam area, and we're really looking for this against cover two on that right-hand side. We're going to put those safeties in a ton of conflict. Now, in Madden, you want to be a little bit more strategic and understanding and understand, again, these yellow zones, you have to account for the user. Those are really, really important. So because they are so important and it's important to account for them, what we want to really try to key in on here is the high low of the user in the middle between this tight end streak and then this running back kind of out route, in route, Texas route, whatever you want. I'm going to put him on a, a little Texas route here. And what you'll see with this and what this is going to do is the user on the right is now in conflict. And you see here he takes that running back and those outside fades will push those safeties to the outside. And now the whole middle becomes – manipulatable, becomes much, much more open for us to be able to take a, uh, advantage of. Now, another way that you can take advantage of this would be essentially a cover three. And oftentimes, if someone's sending pressure out of a cover three look, something like this right here. So same idea. We're going to be in four verticals. We're just going to streak this left side guy and then maybe run like a little comeback. I like to sometimes tag a comeback just in case we're wrong, right? And what you'll see, oh, there's all that space in the seam area of the field. And you're just getting to those intermediate seam throws a lot quicker in this. Now, there are other ways to attack the same space. One of the other ways, uh, and it's really just attacking these yellow zones. So, again, we're assuming, right, that when we call this play, we're pretty much anticipating, you know, a flat zone here, a flat zone of either either hard flats on these out on these guys or blitzers and then linebackers we're either ex expecting again blitzing or we're expecting a user on one of them and then we're also you know expecting hook curls that's generally what you're going to look for so how would you set this play up if you were going to try to use some of the other methods of manipulating it what i would do is i would take the outside receiver on the right and we're going to put him on an out route or we'll put the running back on either a wheel, or if you don't like the timing of the wheel, put him on a streak. I'm going to put him on a wheel for this. We're going to put the tight end on a post route, and then we're going to hitch the left side slot. So what, we do, what we've done with this play is we've created a lot of stress on the yellow zone specifically. And so what you'll see here, if you watch the running back, see, look at all that space that he's able to get into. It's one of those key spaces that we don't attack a lot with our combos and so when you can do something like this it really is helpful now one thing I will say just kind of knowing how Madden 24 works that I do think is important and also this would be a little bit more of an air raid style if you want to run the running back wheel 100% think that's fine you can you can um, put this guy on the out route, which will pull the flats a little bit more. You could also leave him on a fade. The reason the fade will still work is because of the spacing horizontally of the formation. So you see that flat still goes sideline, and this space is still vacated. Now, it's not as open as had we put him on a 
uh, out route. Okay, that's important. So just kind of keep those things in check and in balance. But in general, that is the seams concept. There are a lot of ways to get to it. I didn't hit on the last part of this. So let's say, for example, that we're running this and the user decides, okay, I'm going to take the running back away. The really cool part of this play is that your tight end wheel or um, your tight end post is going to snap back across the middle. And now you see the conflict here where that hitch should be open or that tight end post should be open. In the two by two spread, that hitch specifically is going to be on the numbers, which is one of the best ways to manipulate a traditional cover four. If you guys didn't know, when you put a hitch on the numbers, if you watch this cloud flat, he'll almost always suck inside and then the tight end will become open kind of in that left side seam area of the field. So those kind of two main methods. Another one last one is to streak the running back. And then if you wanted to, you could also do a tight end post with a slot streak like this. And then you could, you could have the double streaks on the left. So you're attacking the seams on the left and then this right side, same kind of method. And then if you wanted to, you could even do this. The cool part about this method is now it's a little bit better just in terms of if they do run cover four or cover three, or they have a little bit more of a disciplined cover two out there, you now have some high lows to the sidelines. So anyways, that's the seams concept. So the last play that we're going to be going over is called the stick concept. Now the Y stick concept is, uh, it, it's, it's really more of a, a triangle read is what we're trying to go for from a Madden perspective. Now true air raid, would basically do this right here. This is a Y stick. And essentially it's a fade with a with a option route to your slot that could be either a tight end quick out or a tight end hitch. So if it's zone, he's gonna hitch. If it's man, he's gonna run an out route. And then you're running back flat. So it's really just meant to be like a, a pop pass to the tight end. Now, in, in, and if you really look and examine kind of what is going on with the stick concept, what you'll find is it's essentially a triangular read. This is why on the back side, you typically will have a slant. The reason for that slant is if that linebacker on the right side, if he decides that he is gonna go to the tight end, and you'll see him do that here, then where you would wanna throw it would be right in the middle, right in between those yellow zones, okay? Generally. And then if that linebacker, let's say, so again, coverage looks like this if that left linebacker kind of went more to the middle then you would really want to look to your backside kind of double slant right there okay so that's in general what the stick concept kind of is okay so for Madden we want to understand what is the purpose of stick how can we then basically create some Madden uh, variations of it that are going to make it even better right so the main purpose of stick is to create triangles in the passing game. And so we can do this, uh, we, can, we can do this a lot of different ways. So one of my favorite methods uh, to do this is to take the tight end, put him on a uh, tight end apprentice post. On a left side here, what I like to do with this, uh, with this left side guy is we're going to put him on a hitch, put the running back on that side, put him on a table. And then this is kind of the same basic thing. Now, if you wanted to, you could put this guy on a crosser to get him across the field quicker. But the main inflection point that this guy is going to serve is you're either going to throw him here or you're going to throw him over here. That's the basic idea. So if they shade down to defend your, your stick route, so to speak, on the left, then what you'll see here, so you see, watch the hook curl, see how he's kind of sit, and then we can throw that right there, Okay. That's the idea. So in general, that's kind of what I look for in terms of how I'd run, run this play. So all you would need to do to this play to make it really good would be to put a slot apprentice post to the left. And then this backside receiver is the receiver that I find to be the most difficult in the play. So it's, he needs to serve a, a specific purpose, right? And really the, the purpose that this left side receiver should serve, in my opinion, is essentially a check down little in route. Uh, and the reason why I go with the check down in route here is just because if that hook curl on the left becomes a mid read on the left or the user kind of carries the slot receiver, then we're going to throw the ball right 
there underneath it. Okay. So to me, stick is really good when married with kind of a levels backside concept. But in general, another really cool thing you can do with your stick concept is figure out a way to better utilize your, uh, your go route or your streak. Because oftentimes he's just running off coverage. And again, if they have a coverage like cover four drop, they can give this play some issues. If you look here to the right, you see where, you know, I have to, you see what I'm saying? So that's a big, big aspect of the play stick. Because again, we're really just trying to, to manip create triangles. So another way that we can do the same basic idea, the same basic concept from stick would be to utilize the zig flat method. So the way this is going to work is we're going to put the running back on a flat. We're going to put the square receiver on a smart routed in. We're going to put the triangle receiver on a zig, as you can see. And then on the right side here, a couple different options that you can do. I like to put the tight end on a clear out streak and then a backside drag just as a check down. And essentially what this is going to do is you can throw this zig kind of in these little pockets like you would a hitch. And then the other cool part about this is that that zig route is going to pull a lot of yellow zones underneath. And it's going to create kind of that triangle point where our triangle is going to be between our, our flat, our zig, and then our dig kind of coming over the middle of the field, as you see right there. So that is one method for creating stick. There's a lot of them. Another one that is kind of an underrated method would be to flat the tight end, ghost the running back. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Would be to flat the tight end, ghost the running back. Go ahead and post your backside receiver. And then you could, a couple different methods to get to it, but basically just a little backside in or backside curl, but something like this or something like this. These are all variations of kind of just different methods to get to triangles in the passing game that are super effective. Another really good triangle concept that you can do if you have running back apprentice is using your running back apprentice uh, Texas route. So we're going to use the running back apprentice Texas route. We're going to streak our tight end. We're going to slot apprentice post our slot receiver. And then from there, it, you know, kind of different methods to get to it, but essentially using a flat, maybe, you know, using a, a curl. Um, another way you could do it would be use a flat and then use a, sh a clear out. This is, again, we're just getting to these triangles where we're manipulating the yellow zones. But in general, that's kind of what stick is. Um, another really good method for using the play stick would be a, a post to your slot receiver, a running back, a running back table, a curl, and then you can you know kind of run the play like this. This is another variation of stick or getting to a triangle read. Another great way to run it would be to put the tight end on a, a streak and run this guy underneath. These are all methods to just get to this basic triangle where you're really manipulating the hook curl, the vert hook, the mid read in the middle of the field and forcing them to have to choose and then just basically throwing the receiver that they don't choose, right? So another way could be even this concept out of your shallow, co shallow cross, but you're just putting, you know, a ghost route and then curls because the yellow zones are going to get manipulated by those you see right there. So anyways, in general, that is the stick concept. So those are the five concepts, shallow, sail, cross, six or seams, and stick. I want to thank you for watching the video. To learn this stuff more in detail, make sure you join the Patreon. The link to sign up for that is going to be in the description down below.